The Bruised Universe, Hawking's Final Theory. On the 14th of March, 2018, mankind lost the talents of Professor Stephen William Hawking, a theoretical physicist, cosmologist, and occasional Simpsons character, whose work enabled us to understand the universe like never before. He was our generation's Einstein, and as you might expect from such a talented mind, Professor Hawking was working on new theories about the cosmos right up until his final moments. Specifically, a theory which attempts to reconcile our understanding of physics with the potential existence of parallel universes. Parallel Universes Professor Hawking spent many decades of his life working on theories which would explain how our universe is but one of many universes which are parallel to each other. If they exist, these parallel universes do not sit directly side by side, but instead occupy the same space, along with every other universe which all form part of a wider multiverse. This means that we are currently experiencing just one layer of reality by interacting solely with our own universe. It is a crazy idea for sure, but it is one which is firmly rooted within our understanding of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics might be a bit too complex for us to explain right here, though, so let's break it down in terms we can all understand. Imagine if the Olsen twins were magically fused together, not in some freaky conjoined twin situation where they've only got one head and half a butt cheek each. Just imagine if they occupied the exact same body. I don't know how this happened. Maybe the stronger Olsen ate her twin in the womb, or perhaps they merged symbiotically like two balls of hot slime. Either way, put that image in your head for a moment and ask yourself a question. If each twin occupied the exact same body, if they used the same pancreas, the same brain, and all the same cells, how could you tell there were two of them who stood before you? Is one of them screaming? Has Mary-Kate tried to punch herself out of Ashley's abdomen? This is the problem we've had when trying to prove the existence of multiple universes. We are not yet sufficiently advanced enough to be able to delve deep down beneath the surface and identify the signs of other universes which exist alongside our own. Professor Hawking wanted to change that. And if he couldn't provide the answers today... He at least wanted to set the foundations for future physicists to find them tomorrow. Not literally tomorrow, but you know what I mean. Therefore, Hawking's final theories were less of an attempt to prove the existence of the multiverse, and more so a roadmap for how future generations might go about proving it themselves. And Hawking believed that the focus of our inquiries should be an area of the sky known as the cold spot which some scientists believe could be evidence of our universe's cosmic collision with another parallel universe. The Bruise Also known as the CMB or WMAP cold spot, cold spot gets its name due to the fact that it appears to be much colder than the area surrounding it. Viewed as part of the sky via microwaves, its temperature differs from the cosmic background radiation by 2.7 kelvins, meaning this region is approximately minus 270 Celsius colder than it should be. There are a few explanations of why this cold spot exists. Some scientists believe it represents a gargantuan supervoid nearly a billion light years across. Others contend it has been an example of cosmic texture, which is a defect caused by the way the early universe transitioned. Personally, I think the universe is a giant pillow, and this is the part I'd like to sleep on. Or, maybe it's a region of space entirely populated by stepdads who keep turning the heating down. But, Professor Hawking and many others think differently. They believe that this cold spot is a bruise. A bruise formed by our universe colliding with another. The professor discussed this in a final March update to his 2017 paper, A Smooth Exit from Eternal Inflation where Hawking and Thomas Hertog tried to solve an issue regarding the Big Bang. An idea presented in 1983 called the No Boundary Theory describes how our universe began as a tiny point, which then instantly inflated into an early version of our current universe. However, if we accept this as true, then we must also accept that another part of the theory is also correct. 
the part which predicts that our one big bang was accompanied by an infinite number of others, each of which produced another separate universe. This explosion of multiverses should have left some kind of imprint on our universe's cosmic background radiation, and Hawking believed that the CMB cold spot could be just that, a giant cosmic bruise from which the bubble of our early universe started a little bump and grind with another hot young universe during their inflationary phase. Sounds naughty. But how could we go about proving this without discovering some sort of cosmic sex tape? Laura Marcini Houghton is another theoretical physicist and cosmologist who is also a believer in the existence of the multiverse. In 2007, a team led by Marcini Houghton concluded that the CMB cold spot was the unmistakable imprint of another universe beyond the edge of our own. And she further concluded that this theory should be testable by finding its twin cold spot on the opposite hemisphere of its celestial sphere. The CMB cold spot is centered within the southern celestial hemisphere in the direction of the constellation Eridanus. So if we want to find the Mary Kate to the cold spots Ashley, we need to look for a big old patch of frigidly cold space in the northern celestial hemisphere. Computational analysis has predicted the potential existence of a northern cold spot, but so far we've yet to find direct evidence of its existence. Another way we could prove that the multiverse exists is through the use of deep space probes, which could hunt down and analyze small traces of background radiation left over from the creation of parallel universes. The technology to conduct such an experiment is a long way off. But we needn't be disappointed or short-termist about this. The fact is that for the first time, thanks to Hawking's work, we now have a theory regarding the composition of the multiverse, which can be tested through human experiments. We may not be able to test it today, or tomorrow, or even ten years from now, but one day, Hawking's theories on the nature of the cosmos and reality will be able to be verified. If they're wrong, we'll no doubt learn some other interesting information on the way, while also ruling out one of the many possibilities for the state of our universe. But if he's right, if this theory leads us to being able to prove the existence of multiple universes, then one can only imagine what impact such a discovery might have on sentient life. We're going to talk about this in our bonus video, Life in the Multiverse which you can watch in our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then that's fine. Bullsh we know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality, visited by only a select few, whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind-opener deserved? Or is it, and everything it represents, just a load of bullshit? 
We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strange mysteries.